Hey everybody and welcome to another Imperium. Whoop whoop. We are on issue 73. Going forward every Wednesday now is going to be Warhammer Wednesday. So expect Imperium magazines. I want to get these done. I want to move on with my life. I want all the Imperium magazines done. We're on issue 73, which means we have about 17 left, which is plenty for this year. So let's dive on in. As you can see, there is a beautiful Necron Destroyer, so that must give you a hint of what we are facing. So, Heavy Destroyer, we are going to learn about the Blood Angels, the Sangu Sanguinor, and Gabriel Seth of the Flesh Tearers. We learn a little bit about the Tau Fifth Sphere expansion and Blackstone Fortresses. We then build and paint the Destroyer. So, we learn a little bit about them. Sentient Weapon Platforms. This has a beast of a gun on it. Hang on. I'll spoil the painting video a little bit. This isn't going to show you much detail though. Because the lights are a little dark in here today. But it is a big weapon platform. Great little kit. Uh, I built mine with the... How the, on earth do you say his gun? In Mythic Exterminator. But you also have the option for the Gorse Destructor, which looks pretty cool here. I'm kind of disappointed I didn't build that one now that I'm looking at it. But I went with the other guy. You then get your classic RPG and stuff, where you can keep a killer's tally if you wanted to. I watch a few Necron YouTubers, uh, the big one being Idik for me. His games are... he plays a lot of friendly games. When he talks about these, he's not super impressed with them, which is a shame. It's a great looking model, but he pretty much describes them as point and shoot. You'll probably delete a unit or knock off some wounds from something key. But then the return fire that these get, it just gets deleted. So it's a bit of a hit and miss unit from what I've heard. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Then we get a page about the Sanguinor. The exemplar of the host, he appears. He is a mysterious entity of unknown origin. He appears only when the blood angels need him most. And he is a myth and awe. We then get uh, Gabriel Seth. That is a beautiful picture. He leads the flesh tearers, which are pretty much, from my understanding, then barely better than a corn berserker. They're just a good guy version of them. That is a cool piece of artwork, though. I do like that. I think that's from one of the audio book covers, actually. Uh, maybe The Assassination of Gabriel Seth, I think the story is called. But he just carries this massive, massive chain blade called the Raw... Uh, hang on, called the Blood Reaver. That's just, he's just badass looking. He needs an updated model, though, sadly. Uh, the Fifth Sphere talks about how the Tau are always trying to expand their control, slowly absorbing some Imperial worlds. And I do believe they've been fighting the Death Guard recently, and Gene Steeler Cult says up the top there. So they are starting to interact with the wider galaxy, for good or for bad. <laughs> A little bit about Gene Steeler Cults at the top, the Hidden Foe. And it also talks about their sizes and their battle suits. This is a great little image. It's annoying that they then put these two up here. They should have just done them in a line. I don't like it going like that because you'd think these were giant, but they're not. So cool. Either way, very cool. I like Tau. I used to collect them. I think I've collected almost every army in 40k. Uh, I really enjoyed painting them. The only issue I had was that they were really a gun line army back in the day. And that isn't a style I like to play. I like to get up close and dirty. So I usually go for close combat -y, in your face armies. Apart from my Eldari, they're shooty, but they're short range shooty. So similar, but different. Then we learn about the Blackstone Fortresses. It's pretty much little rogue trader fluff goodies and it's stuff that you'd find in the black fortress game so the beast men the zote the crute the spindle drones which i love the look of them the amble and the urgles 
It's very cool. The setting is great. It is a game that I did not pick up. I wish I had. I think it is still for sale. So there is a chance. I've just, I'm not buying it this year. I'm trying not to buy any new 40k. Uh, second hand is fine. These magazines, I've bought them all now, so I'm not buying any more of them. So we'll see if we can actually do that. We're six months into the year and I've achieved it so far. So I reckon we could do the whole year. Then we get the how to paint. And if I followed their guide, it would look like this. But we're not following their guide. You're following mine. So let's get to it. All right, here we go. The model is built. It is primed black to the best of my abilities. There are some greys sticking through and the base is primed. Now I did break the peg on the rock, so I'm going to be gluing him directly to the base. But that's a me problem, not a you problem. So to kick things off, we are just going to do the base real quick with a dry brush of Dawnstone. Nothing exciting. You know the deal. Load up my ratty old brush and I'm just going to dry a brush it over. Now I'm probably going to try and tone down the exposure I've got on this, but it seems like my uh, my painting light was perfectly bright enough to, to today for some reason and probably gave everything this slightly overexposed look, but the final images will be perfectly fine. So there you go, base is done, super simple, nice and easy. I'm really not fussed about my bases at the moment. Up next is another layer of dry brushing, this time the lead belcher. It's going to be the same way I do nearly all my Necrons these days. So I am doing the flayed one, uh, not flayed ones, the uh, <laughs> destroyer cult dynasty, the uh, Novatech. Hopefully I just said that right. It's been a while since I've painted or even talked about Necrons. It's been a lot of Admech. A lot of Sisters of Battle of late. I feel like I've, uh, feels nice to be back with Necrons again. I know we did a, a, a Lich Guard recently, but this guy, he's bulky. I love it. I wish there was more than one, but I appreciate this is not a cheap kit. Don't actually know how much these are retailing. Let me have a quick look. Oh, wow. He is $45 Canadian. So that $15 magazine price was an absolute steal. Should have bought more. Damn. Shame this magazine's now out of print. $45. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I mentioned earlier in this video, this year I am going 40k clean. And what I mean by that is I'm trying not to buy new kits. I'm not going to say I will succeed, but I'm going to try. And while I, before I finish this conversation, I've grabbed the flesh tier of red and we're going to start working away on the red armor. But yeah, there's been zero gameplay from me as far as 40k is concerned. Not played a game in ages. Been enjoying my uh, Warlord games a lot more. So this year I'm focusing more on them and I'm going to save the money that I would normally spend on 40k and put it into Warlord games instead. But yeah, it doesn't mean I dislike the hobby. I'm still buying the books. I'm reading the books. I love the lore in the 40k verse. I'm very happy with the armies I've got. Uh, there is a little project coming up where I need to rebase all my Eldar, which is going to be a real pain, and actually finish painting that army. There's a lot of blue left to paint, which I have not done yet. So that's probably going to take over from these Imperium magazines once I've completed them. Yeah, I just, though GW are producing some beautiful kits, nothing's took my fancy yet. And the closest I've come is Gene Steeler Colts, but they've not absorbed me as much as I had hoped. Also, the Astra Militarum are pretty cool. But once again, not sucked me in enough to buy. So I'm just going to do my Necrons, do my Space Marines, do my Elder finish all the models I've got sitting around. i got a lot of them. got a load of second edition stuff that I need to get through as well. So there's plenty of content in my room that needs to be done, and that is going to be the focus for me now. 
Uh, so with the flesh tier done, we are moving on to the orc flesh, which I'm going to use on all the green sections. And now, of course, I have bought some games recently that haven't been touched in a while. So we've got the Blackstone Fortress set, the, the mini game, not the actual full set. Uh, we've also got the Space Marine 2 board game. I bought that. We got Blood Bowl sitting around here somewhere. I got second edition Warhammer 40k box to do an unboxing with you. I got Star Wars Legions. There's tons of stuff in this room that needs to be painted. So I think having a little break is going to do me wonders. But until then, we do have lots still to paint. All right, I'm going to carefully work my way around and probably skip forward a little bit in a minute. But ultimately doing the eye lenses and then we're going to do the gun barrel. Get anything that should be green painted up. It's such a beast of a model. I'm going to have to do extra stages on this because I can't leave it. Just contrast paint. I think that would be doing it a disservice. So we'll probably do an extra layer of red and hit it with some washes as well. And through the power of editing, we are finishing up the green. And we will jump into the next color, which is going to be Nasdreg Yellow. Now, hopefully you've watched this channel long enough to know that I use this for my gold bronzy colors. So I'm going to be picking out all the glyphs on this model. And probably the cabling on his gun and just some key other areas that I think could use a little boost of color. Here we go. We're finishing up the tubing. We're going to get shoulder pads as well. It's got to have some delicious looking shoulder pads. Get this tubing just so it helps pop. I don't want to use black on this model. I've gone off using black. Uh, it's I'm heavily relying on Gravelord Grey, but for this model I'm trying to stick to GW paints. And then we are going to start lifting the red up with Mephiston Red. This is going to go through a real ugly stage. <laughs> I do apologize for it. So you don't need to see all the ugly stage, but I'm going to try and work my way around this model. Get the base red down. Look at it. It looks real garish. It's like, what have I done? What have I done? I've ruined it. But it's okay. I know what I'm doing. I'm trusting my process. I have a process. And that is none oil. I'm going to absolutely cover the red with it. It'll darken it down, make it look a little bit more exciting. Get some glamour shots done, and here he is in all his battered glory. He looks so cool. I'm really happy with how this model turned out. He is going to look a bit bold compared to a lot of them. My Necrons, I need to go back and start doing this red on all of them. Brighten them up a little bit. Probably not the line troopers, but the bigger vehicles, the bigger figures, all need this hit of red done to them. Yeah, I'm really happy with how he looks. I hope you enjoyed this little paint guide. And let's get back to the magazine. Ooh. There you go. Hopefully you enjoyed my little paint guide. Uh, we then add some colors to the Ultramarines and the Battle Sisters. And then the Ad Mech. Before hitting up a few other Necrons, like the Flayed Ones. And a little tutorial on painting faces. Sorry, I drifted off camera there. Uh, I hate painting faces. If I can, I will always put a helmet on my figures. It's just who I am. My camera is struggling to focus on all those faces. So let's move on. We then finish off the magazine with the classic 9th edition rules. So I went for the blast weapon, the emitic exterminator. Let's, uh, let's get the stats up. This is 9th edition stats, so there's nothing exciting here. It would have been range 36, heavy 3d3, strength 7, minus 1 AP, damage 1 blast. Whilst the destructor is a strength 10, heavy 1, 36 inch range, damage 3d3. Very cool. Then get a tutorial about using the weapon. And then a little battle. Grinding advance. It's a simple mission. Four, five objectives. Basically, the objective is to take no man's land. Pretty straightforward. You get points for controlling one or more. 
two or more. And if you have more than your opponent, up to a maximum of 15. Uh, at the end of each turn, if you control the central objective marker, you score a number of victory points equal to the current battle round. So if you can grab that late in the game, you are probably guaranteed the win. Then in hopefully next week's painting tutorial, we are going to deal with the fire strike servo and the hemophrope reactor. So until then, cheers for watching. Bye bye.